Hey everyone, it's Robin the Copy Bitch and Stewie, my sidekick slaw. So, are you wondering how to become a freelance copywriter? Hmm, here's the thing. Maybe you shouldn't. I get lots of questions from people who are thinking about taking the dive into freelance copywriting and that's great, that's what my channel's all about, but just because you're thinking about it doesn't necessarily mean <laughs> that you need to go for it. So let's talk about the difference between a freelance copywriter and a copywriter who actually works for a company because that could be the way that you should go and it's good to kind of compare and do that whole pros and cons thing and just understand what might be the best fit for you. So before we get too far, I'm going to assume you know what copywriting is, but just in case, let's talk about copywriting. Copywriting, simply put, is any writing that sells a product, a service, or a cause. And a copywriter is the person who writes those words that sell a product, a service, or a cause. You encounter copywriting throughout your day. Think about when you go to fetch your mail and you get the junk mail that comes in for different whatever, you know, someone trying to get you to make a donation or they're trying to sell you something or it could just be a product catalog. Someone has to write the product catalog copy. That's a copywriter. You encounter it when you hear a radio commercial or you see a TV commercial or those annoying ads that follow you around on social media. Someone's writing all the copy and that person more than likely is a copywriter. They might be called an advertising copywriter, they might be called a content marketer, they might be called a marketing writer. There are lots of different synonyms for copywriter and people do debate whether they're accurate or not. We're not going to get into that in this video. I use the synonyms interchangeably because the people hiring me don't always know what they want. They just know that they need a writer to write the thing that will sell their product or their service. So some people call me a copywriter, some people call me a content writer, marketing writer. It's all the same to me, okay? So when you add the word freelance in front of copywriter, you get freelance copywriter. Now the difference between a freelance copywriter and a copywriter who is employed by someone is just that. The freelancer is self-employed. They're working for themselves. I am a freelance copywriter. I've been doing this since 2002. It's now 2023 as I record this. So that's over 20 years. That's what, 21 years, if my math is right. And I am self-employed, which means that I'm responsible for paying my taxes and health insurance and all that sort of good stuff, which we'll talk about more in a moment. If someone is an employed copywriter, they're working for a company, they're working for a boss. Yes, I have bosses and my clients, but again, that's the difference. Freelance copywriter, self-employed, copywriter who works for a brand is an employed copywriter or a company. It could be a brand, a company, small business, you get what I'm saying. This is what attracts people to the freelance lifestyle. They're like, oh, freelance copywriter, you know, they're working from home in their jammies, they're their own boss. And yes, all of that is true and it's great, but like anything else, there are good things and bad things and just things that are different. So it's not for every personality, just as being an employed copywriter is not for every personality. So before you trot too far down the, hey, how do I become a freelance copywriter path? Again, I wanna say, maybe you shouldn't. So reason number one to think about, if what you want to do in your day-to-day -day life is just work on copywriting assignments, you wanna be handed the assignment, you do the work, you hand it back, and then you work on the next one, well, freelancing might not be the job for you because in addition to doing the actual writing and the assignments, you have to go out and find the assignments and market yourself and network and deal with the business aspect of being a self-employed copywriter. So that's a big difference. And there's no shame in saying, hey, I just wanna work for someone who says, here's what we need to do and I just do it. It takes a lot of pressure off, you can focus on just the words, which if that's what's attracting you to copywriting, you just love to write and you love, you know, being clever with copy and with words and wordplay, then perhaps, perhaps being a freelancer isn't the way to go. You might want to consider getting a gig as an employee copywriter. Speaking of the business stuff, there's a lot of stuff I have to take care of in addition to the writing. I have to make sure I keep good books, meaning receipts, expenses. I have to remember to pay my quarterly taxes, otherwise I get in trouble with the IRS. Again, I'm in the US, so 
I know it's going to vary from country to country, but this is my perspective and what I have to deal with. So, and these aren't like I say, it, like it's something I have to deal with. It's just part of being a business owner. Anyone who's a business owner has to do these things. And it's just another layer of stuff that you have to think about in addition to the fun stuff, which is the writing, which isn't always fun, but you get what I'm saying. So in addition to doing the clients, work. I have to get the clients. I have to maintain the relationships. I have to network. I have to be able to market myself. I have to continue marketing myself even when things are busy. And that's a big mistake that a lot of new freelancers and even veteran freelancers make when they're super, super busy. They're not marketing themselves thinking, oh, I'm just super busy. But that's when you really have to market yourself because eventually all that busy work that you've been doing is going to end and you're going to need new work and suddenly you haven't been marketing yourself or you haven't been networking or keeping up with the relationships and checking in with people and then you go through a dry spell. So there's a lot of juggling, there's a lot of learning and if you're thinking, mm, I just want to write, man, I just want to write, I want to write for a company, I want to punch in and punch out, I hear you and there are times when I think I might want to do that even now. So something to think about. If that's what you want to do, then freelancing life might not be your thing. Keep in mind that you have to pay for things when you are self-employed that you don't have to do when you're an employee. So I have to pay for my own health insurance and my own disability insurance. I have to remember to contribute to my retirement. When you work for a company, especially if it's a bigger company, I realize it might be different if you're working for a very small business, but let's, let's just go with a bigger business where they cover your health insurance, they cover your dental insurance, they include vision insurance, you have a 401k with matching. So I live with Mr. Word Nerd and he's a content editor web guy and we sometimes compare, like he works for someone full time and he has these awesome, awesome perks, which is great. But sometimes I'm sitting there going, hmm, hmm. So that's something to keep in mind if you don't want to be tasked with all that other stuff. And health insurance, again, in the US, I pay close to $700 a month in insurance. And that's just for the insurance card. Like that's the price of admission. I still have co-pays and out-of-pocket that I pay. It's $684 a month right now, and I'm sure it's going to go up in November because it does every single year. So something to keep in mind. And it's not just health insurance. You have to think about the other types of insurance you need as a self-employed individual to protect yourself and your business. So what I mean by that, disability insurance. If you are a freelancer and you are, God forbid, in an accident or you're dealing with a, an illness that requires treatment and you can't be working all the time, well, you still have to pay rent and the mortgage and you know, keep yourself in wine and Doritos, as I like to say around here. And disability insurance is something you have to think about. It's not a lot per month, but it's another expense. Um, business insurance of various types. You might need some sort of liability insurance. It, there's a lot. You have to think about retirement. You have to maybe think about life insurance, depending on your situation. So, and I, I, I understand that some of these insurance types apply, even if you are an employee, but it's just, there's a lot more admin work that you have to think about when you are a self-employed freelance copywriter. I know that was redundant, but you get what I'm saying. Whereas if you are working for someone, a lot of that stuff is managed and handled for you, which can be nice. So you can focus again on your work and just do the work and then leave and know the other stuff is taken care of. So something to think about. Here's another reason why working for a business as an employee might make sense. Perhaps, perhaps you love working in a team. Maybe you love going to an office. Maybe not every day, but at least, you know, a few days a week and you love collaborating with team members and you love the water cooler talk and you love just part of being part of the environment and being part of the marketing team, the discussions and stuff like that. That's going to happen much more likely in an environment where you are an employee. Now, I am alone. I'm alone 100% of the time here, you know, just working in my little basement office. And yes, I do have Zoom calls occasionally with clients and occasionally there's a small group on, but it's a lot rarer than you would think. And yes, I do occasionally slack, you know, people like clients and things like that. But again, it's a very much a solo mindset, solo life. So if you are someone who craves some of that collaboration and some of that camaraderie, now granted, even employee, employed copywriters, a lot of them are remote these days, but if you're an employee, you'll, you'll probably be forced to participate in more of those group settings, whether it's a big group Zoom that you do every week or those group, you know, virtual water coolers and things like that. They, they'll, they'll 
be more of that to try to mimic that environment in an office. So if that is something that you like, it might make more sense to go the employment route rather than the freelance route. Okay, as a freelance copywriter, especially, I'm a generalist, so I don't have a niche that I focus on, but even if I had a niche, it would, this would still apply. I'm all over the place with the topics I'm doing. Like I'm in beauty education one day, and then I talk about background checks another day, and then another day I'm talking about urology topics, and you know, vaginal prolapse, and <laughs> erectile dysfunction, and other things that I torture people with at Thanksgiving dinner. So. I'm all over the place. It's not one topic that I'm getting really, really deeply into. I'm writing about a bunch of different things. So that if you, if your mind just doesn't work that way, or you would much rather go deeply into one subject or one brand and just focus on the ser services and products they're selling, being an employee might make more sense. I actually know a writer. She was, she was kind of doing the freelance thing and she was all over the place because she had so many different clients and different types of businesses. And it was just, she, she just wanted to focus. She just wanted to just focus on one brand, one, you know, one, one, one topic and write about all of those, you know, write all the different types of content around that topic rather than do all the different topics and have to get to know different things. And again, no shame in that, like that, that I understand that. And sometimes that does sound awfully attractive to me, but again, something to keep in mind as you're sitting there going, Hey, I want to be a freelance copywriter. And I'm here to say, <laughs> maybe you don't want to be. So if you're watching this video and you've been thinking up until this point, you know, I want to be a freelance copywriter and trying to figure out how to hang out the shingle and, and do it. And now I'm giving, I'm giving you pause. That's a good thing. And there are plenty of opportunities out there now. Yes, it's competitive. Yes. There are a lot of challenges to breaking in and everything like that. But now if you know, Hey, maybe I want to be an employed copywriter. Now you can kind of trot down that path and focus on the things you need to do to land a gig where you might be happy. And you know what? It doesn't need to be necessarily an either or thing. I know lots of employed content marketers, content writers, copywriters who also freelance on the side. So they keep their, their fingers in some free, with some freelance clients just because they like the added income, because they like having, I think those relationships in case there's a layoff, you know, it's kind of like a weird time right now in copy land with AI and a lot of people are nervous, even though I think that's a little bit overblown, actually a lot overblown, but people are nervous and they want to make sure they have, you know, a plan B or a plan C. So that could be a way to do it. And it could be a way for you to test the waters too. Like maybe you get a paid gig, a full-time paid gig, and you have some freelance stuff on the side and maybe you discover, you know what, I really like doing the freelance stuff. And then maybe you transition to more of that, or maybe you realize, you know what, I want to stick with the with the man and the paid check or you know the check I get you know every couple weeks or once a month or whatever it is and the benefits that go with it again no shame in it and trust me after 20 plus years doing this I have times when I sometimes think and will sometimes occasionally apply to something that I see online that just looks really interesting because it's like wow that actually sounds really good really nice and I will do that. It hasn't come to fruition, obviously. I'm still doing the freelance thing. But again, freelancing isn't for everyone. So I just want to end with one final piece of advice because in addition to figuring out whether freelance copywriting is the way to go or maybe you want to be an employed copywriter, you need to actually take another step back before you even get to that point and ask yourself, are you a good writer? Now, writing is something you can learn, but I'm very wary of the YouTube channels that are out there that are talking about how you can become a copywriter with no experience. You know what? I'm sure there are some success stories out there because, you know, if it happens to one person, then it becomes like this, oh, anyone could do it. It's not true. All right. You, you actually need to know how to write and write well. So you need to be honest with yourself. It's, it's like, you know, if you want to run a marathon, if you want to run 26.2 miles, you have to be able to run a mile first. You know, you can't start from not being able to run even a mile to running 26.2 miles. And that's true for, you know, anything, but it's true for copywriting. And I get, I get the desire to want this. Like it's, it's copywriting's fun. Being able to write for a living is fun. And I get that, that the romance around that. Now, in addition to being a copywriter, I'm also a fiction writer. So I can give you an example that I've been, I've been where you are and I understand the desire of wanting to, you know, be a successful writer overnight. 25 years ago when I was like really getting into the fiction writing, 
I spent so much time focusing on the publishing aspect, like what would happen, what you have to do to like land the agent so you can publish your novel and you know, started reading about publishing contracts. I hadn't written a novel yet. So it's like, I was so like, I put the cart so ahead of the horse. You gotta be careful about that. So before you even get to the point of, do you, should you be a freelance copywriter or should you be an employee copywriter? Ask yourself if you actually know how to write and if you understand the tenets of copywriting and marketing writing. And again, this is learnable. A lot of it you can learn online for free. I'm always talking about HubSpot Academy and Copy Blogger and AWAI, so check those out and make sure you know what you're doing before then you get to this decision about should you be a freelancer, or should you be an employed copywriter, okay? But again, the question shouldn't be so much how to become a freelance copywriter, it should be <laughs> should you? And if the answer is yes, I do have videos about how to go about doing that and starting a freelance copywriting business and how to land your first clients and how to charge for services. So I will link to those in the description and all around my face. And I wish you lots of luck in your journey. And if you've got questions, please ask. I am the copy bitch. I say, ask the copy bitch. And I will do either a video or answer in the comments or both. And hey, if you got anything out of this video, please give us a thumbs up because that helps us out with the Google algorithm. And I am Robin the copy bitch. This is Stewie, my side kicks off and we will see you next time. Bye.